Hello, welcome to Scott's Odyssey. Being that we have some nice weather, I decided to do a trail hike to visit a site that has no record of origin, but has multiple stories that continue on to this day. Welcome to the Indian Steps Trail, an interconnect between the Mid-State Trail to the Crownover Trail on Tussie Mountain. See you in a minute. So I keep trying to do the intro and there's a lot of noise in the background and I don't know if this guy's picking it up uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug the microphone while I'm talking to you so you can hear the jabber that's going on in the background here we go unplugging the microphone and now we're on the more ambient mic you know maybe it's not turkey Maybe it's frogs. Yeah, that's frogs. There must be a pool of water behind me somewhere, which would make sense. That's one of the creeks that, can, that run through this area, the Globe Run. Spring's here. <laughs> See you in a minute again. Welcome back. If you've watched my videos before, thank you for your patronage and I hope you enjoy these tales of the Indian steppes. If you're new to Scott's Odyssey, welcome aboard, and please take a moment to click subscribe for more of this journey through Odyssey stories of who we once were. It costs you nothing but a click and will give you continuous adventures in return. One thing very home to Pennsylvania and specifically Huntington County are state game land, state parks, and the recreational hiking trails that connect it all together. Whether you are seeking nature or just to be out and away from people so you can center yourself, you will find that in our humble little county of green mountains and rolling hills. That's the Crownover Trail. That's a set of a pileated woodpecker. And that is the Indian Steps Trail. This is Harry's Road. As described in some of my other videos, all of this land at one time was completely decimated and laid barren due to the iron ore rush of the mid 1800s. It was not until the early 1900s that naturalists and conservationists started to seek to bring back the beauty of this grand and ancient mountain. In the 1930s, the biggest push was through the Civil Conservation Corps, or CCC, that saved a lot of old, interesting, and useful structures. But they also built many gorgeous facilities out of naturally occurring resources available all around them in order to create recreation locations that preserved the natural state of our forests and did not hinder local flora or fauna habitat. And the crunchy begins. This location of the Indian Steps happens to be one of those CCC locations, or is it? According to Pennsylvania author, folklorist, and former news media tycoon, Henry Wharton Shoemaker, who was renowned for his deep historical knowledge and the ability to spin a tale, some true, some fabricated, and all of them overly embellished. Now, this statement of Shoemaker being a fabricator and embellisher of folklore is not necessarily a rub regarding his character. He had very good reason to tell such tales during his time. Shoemaker was a progressive in his political views. And back in his time, a progressive was a political view, which meant that you very conservatively believed in bettering the human condition through advancements in science, technology, and economic development. Shoemaker played a heavy role in popularizing Pennsylvania 
through a progressive use of folklore and history combined. As for this site, according to the story, early Indian traders were told that this location of the Indian steppes was created during the bloodiest battles recorded in the annals of American Indians. The great chief of the Susquehannas, Chief Pipsisaway, had a royal lodge house in the Bald Eagle Mountains. He had conquered most of the tribes throughout this region. These steps were created to enable the Indian warriors from the southern part of the state, the Kishkokias, to quickly cross the mountains and invade their northern rivals, the Susquehannas. His great victory was that of Rock Springs in Spruce Creek Valley against the Lene Lenape or Kishkokias whom had crossed over the Indian steppes in an effort to capture the northern valleys in 1635. In a single day battle, Pipsisaway defeated the rival tribe, driving the Lenni Lenape out of the Spruce Creek Valley and back across the mountain, with all of their warriors being annihilated. Thus, the great chief made himself the greatest figure in Indian history. Let me know in the comments below if you know of stories and locations such as the Indian Steppes. My research is limited only by the information that people don't share openly. Help me break that barrier and let's share the history and culture of who we once were. This is pretty steep. Uh, it's actually very steep. You can see behind me. Let me get flat with the ground. There we go. And we got some wind. Let's let that wind go by for a moment. I'm out of shape. That's it, sitting around, not doing anything all winter, except for the explorers. <laughs> Let's give it a moment. The story is allegedly validated by the fact that the number of Indians in this area when settlers arrived was greatly decreased in numbers due to warfare. The reality is those decreases were mainly due to pestilence. The Susquehannas mentioned in the story were most likely the Iroquois and Susquehannocks, or more colloquially, the Conestoga Indians, and had a territorial range from the western beach of Susquehanna River to the Ohio River from the top of New York all the way down to northern Maryland. The Lenni Lenape would have had their territory from southern Massachusetts to southern Delaware, but no further west than the Susquehanna River. Although the Conestoga did decimate the Lenni Lenape multiple times throughout the mid to late 1600s, all of their battles took place in the Delaware Valley region, which would be comprised of the Delaware Valley Water Gap down through Philadelphia and into the Delaware Bay, all of which are 200 miles away from this location. It's not that steep. <laughs> Phew. I'll have to edit out all my heavy breathing. The facts dictate that this battle is purely folklore with no foundations in any recorded truth. Just like the story of Princess Nidini 
for which the Nittany Mountain is named or the story of Running Bear and Little White Dove. I could see it. <laughs> it's right there. I could do it. It is more than likely this set of steps was created by the Whipple CCC, as cited by a former member of the Corps, in order to repair an old logging skid trail used to actually build the Midstay Trail and the Crownover Trails. Give you a little perspective. This part goes into a dip, then it goes up and it's even steeper. I hope you enjoyed this tale regarding the Indian steps of Tussie Mountain, and I hope to see you on our next adventure. Mm -hmm.